the rate of a chemical reaction or the reaction rate is defined as the increase in the concentration of a product per unit time or the decrease in the concentration of a reactant per unit time. These terms increase and decrease suggest changes and to represent this change we're going to use the delta symbol. This is a symbol you've probably seen before. It means a change in a certain value between a final state and an initial state. So it's the difference between the final and initial or final minus initial. In the context of reaction rates, increase in the concentration of a product will often represent with something like delta P, where the P in brackets indicates a molarity, and delta R for the decrease in the concentration of reactants per unit time. Delta P is going to be greater than zero since the products will be forming as the reaction occurs, and delta R will be less than zero as the reaction goes forward as the reactants are consumed. And per unit time means we're going to divide by some time interval delta T. So delta T will be just a difference between some final time and some initial time. Before diving a little deeper into this math, it's worth appreciating that chemical reactions can have widely different rates. Three examples are shown for you here. The reaction of sodium and bromine is essentially instantaneous. As soon as the reactants are mixed, the reaction begins occurring extremely rapidly. Reactions that break down food inside our bodies are much slower and can take something like hours to days, while something like the rusting of iron in a shipwreck can take months to years. So the lesson here is that the rates of chemical reactions can span a huge range. Now let's talk a little bit more about how we define reaction rate mathematically. If we're talking about finite changes in time, finite time differences between the concentration points we're collecting, essentially, what we're looking at there is an average reaction rate. It's a change in molar concentration of species divided by the change in time. So we can write that as rate is equal to a change in the concentration of a species. Let's just say we're talking about products for the moment, divided by a change in time, a delta t. This is, in fact, a rate for decomposition of a product, simply this. We define reaction rate as a positive quantity. That means that the rate is always reported greater than zero. But this creates issues when we think about the change in the concentration of the reactants, right? Because that's less than zero if the reactants are going away, so the ratio delta R divided by delta T is also going to be less than zero. So to get around that problem, we define the reaction rate in terms of reactants using a negative sign. We essentially multiply that delta R divided by delta T by negative one to ensure that it's positive. Another way you can think about this, which is equally valid, is that for any species, the rate is the absolute value of the change in molar concentration of that species, I'll just call it I, divided by delta T. One thing that's important to realize about reaction rates is that a particular reaction run, a particular instance of a chemical reaction occurring, will not necessarily have a single rate associated with it. In the vast majority of cases, reaction rate changes as a reaction occurs. And I want to show you what that looks like on a graph of time versus, let's say, the concentration of a reactant. So we might measure that concentration using something like absorbance, for example, and we'll start somewhere at a non-zero concentration of reactant, and as the reaction occurs, that concentration will decrease, and we will record the concentration at certain time points as the reaction occurs, and we might get a graph that looks like this. So clearly the reactant is going away as the reaction occurs, but notice that the rate, the steepness of the decrease, is different between each pair of points. So we can treat each pair of adjacent points as kind of a final and an initial, if you will, for calculating an average rate. So here we can see that the delta r delta t is relatively large. That delta r delta t is in fact just the slope of this line connecting the two points. That's relatively large as the line is relatively steep. If we do the same thing on the other side of the data set and look at, again, the same thing, delta R over 
delta t here, and I should be careful and add negative signs in front of these, um, since we're going to want those rates to be positive, we can see that the rate here is relatively small. And what we can say roughly, and this is an idea that's going to come back again, by the way, is that the rate appears to be in some way proportional to the concentration at that time point. So when the concentration is high, we see a large average rate, and when the concentration of R is low, we see a relatively low reaction rate. We're going to come back to this really important idea a little bit later.